Well, should our kids do chores for pocket money? Do you talk to your kids about money? Do you think they'll be able to buy a house one day? These and other pressing questions are covered in a new book, Pocket Money to Property, How to Create Financially Independent Kids. And please welcome to the cafe the author, Hannah McQueen. Yes, great to have you here, Hannah. Hannah. Thank you. Uh, first up, before we start talking about the book, you are very qualified to talk about money, aren't you? Yes, so I'm a chartered accountant, I've got my Masters in Taxation Law, I run a financial coaching business with 10 offices around New Zealand, and I'm a mum, right, so I'm very conscious of sometimes you want to do something but it's actually a whole lot harder to do even though instructions are given because some choices are more emotional as opposed to financial, especially around money, mm. ironically. You're a bit of a guru in New Zealand when it comes to money. You're single-handedly trying to get everybody to, you know, make the most of it while they have it, which I know is a tough job, so thanks for coming on. What made you want to write this particular book, though? So there were three reasons, I guess, that motivated me to do something about this. So the first one is that I've got kids and they're entitled, even though I'm quite purposeful with my money, so that's something that I'm very conscious of because I think that's a disadvantage. Next, I coach millennials who don't like avocado, <laughs> yet they're still not getting ahead. And then the third thing is that in my, my coaching role with these um, parents who are trying to sort their retirement, they're unable to do that because their kids are not financially independent. So those three things kind of came to a head and I'm like, let's, let's do something about this instead of just bemoan the frustrations of it. Yeah, so what do you think, what sort of age should we be getting our kids financially independent? Well, I think the objective is that by the time they're 16 or 17, making a decision around whether they should incur maybe $60,000 worth of student loan for a job they're not sure that's going to either exist mm. or they're even going to like, we need to equip them with some, I guess, conversation, some points so that they can make an informed decision because that incurring that loan could mean they're not going to buy a house till they're 40 so that means the very definition of their first home isn't really what a first home no, is yeah. so they're, they're set up to be disadvantaged and two generations ago we didn't have to have that conversation because university was free and houses only cost two times what you earned mm. and, and you didn't even have to finish school I think my granddad finished school at seven and it wasn't because he was intelligent it was because you just didn't have to and and it's different now, and I think a lot of the tools that we are telling our kids, like spend less than you earn and reach for the stars, I just don't think it's helpful. And we want them to be a success. As a mum, I want my kids to be successful, but they have to be better. That, that's the reality. It is challenging times. The tools they have been given or inherited don't quite work. Yeah. The tide is going out. And then we say, but if you didn't have avocado on toast, you'd be fine. And it is insulting. Yeah. And I want to do something about that, which is helpful. And you say, you know, I, that parents play a big part in this. The tools that we've got in this changing landscape aren't applicable, I guess, anymore. So do parents have to confront their issues with money as well? I, I think if you want your kids to be financially successful or give them the inside lane with money, you've got to take it seriously yourself and as parents we can probably afford with being a little bit average with money and we probably will be okay in the end because we own a house really yeah. but our kids average will not be okay for them so if we want them to take it more seriously we have to which is when it gets all confronting right and you don't really want to have the conversation am yeah. i going to feel guilty as a parent reading this book that i haven't set my children up well enough i still got time though but but is that that's not something that's going to happen no not at all i just <laughs> came off a seminar series and one of the questions at the end was i'm a shopper my daughter's a shopper she leaves home in a month and i haven't talked to her about money what do i do yeah. and i i think you've just got to be honest like what, what have you done right what have you done wrong Let, let's I, we patronise them I, and they, they want to adult, they, they want to be successful yeah. yet we don't necessarily share things because we're scared we're going to create money hungry kids and mm. we don't want to create that but we just want to create kids where money isn't a thing, just master it. But that starts very early and you can do it systematically if you start early or there's some intense things you can do if you've got to get your... Yeah, you get so it's practical right advice in here, I take it. Very. OK, honest. so on that practical advice, trying to teach kids the value of money, quite often you give them pocket money for chores. Is that a wise thing to do? No, I think the basic chores of being part of a family you don't pay for. Like it's just You just don't. Um, yeah. In fact, when you interview lots of successful people, they cite the fact they had to do chores as one of the things that forced them, to, I guess, to appreciate things. But pocket money should be paid for jobs over and above the basic chores. Right. So okay. my basic chores in my household where the kids have to make their bed, my four-year-old has to put her pull up in the rubbish bin. You know, we kind of get really lowbrow here. Yeah. Um, I want them to clear the table or put their mm. clothes in the, in the washing, uh, washing machine. Mine so that's dishes. basic. Yeah. Mm. But extra jobs might be washing the car or bringing the wood in or things that just over and above the normal, which you can pay for. And 
the, the, what you're trying to teach them with pocket money is that earning money is so important to the choices you have. Absolutely. And we, we don't talk about that enough in this country. We, we kind of like just do the thing you're passionate about without even thinking about, but what does that mean for the rest of your life? Because passion and poverty tend to go hand in hand. My 10 year old wants to read this book. Is it something I can give him to read? He's looked at it and said, Mum, I want to read that. Well, I don't think you should hold him back. I think that he sounds like he's Little an overachiever. That one? Okay, good. And he'll look after you, see, when he's got his money sorted. He'll look after you. Okay, so it's a, it's a book for parents to help with their kids, but also if kids wanted to have a read, nothing wrong with that. It's, I guess we want to bring money to the surface. It's not taboo. There are some practical concepts that need to be mastered. And if it's mastered early on, you don't have to have a financial brain. You just have to master it. And there are ways that you can do it. And the first way is to get Hannah's book, Pocket Money to Property, is available now from all good bookstores in the top 10 too. So congratulations, Hannah. Thank and thank you so much for coming on, sharing some wisdom.